Can used oil analysis detect and prevent engine failure? Hi, I'm Lake, the motor oil geek, and in this segment from the Engine Performance Expo, I'm gonna show you a real life example that gives you that answer. This is my dad's old NASCAR Ford C3 engine. The last time we had it on the dyno, it had picked up 300 horsepower from when we freshened it up. If you remember, that engine had overheated 20 years ago, and we never knew really why it overheated, but we knew it was way down on power after being overheated. We could never figure it out. But the last time we had it in the dyno, when it made all that power and was running great, we actually took an oil sample, and that used oil sample revealed the source of the problem. So here are the details behind the report and how we detected where to look for the problem. The sample was positive for water, actually both samples. So we broke in the engine with the driven GP1 straight 30 braking oil, and it really had almost one full hour on it, like you see in the report. But the race oil we put in afterwards, it didn't have anywhere close to an hour on it. So that was the first indication. Only a few runs with the race oil, yet it had almost as much water as the braking oil. That told us that the water was getting worse the hotter the engine got. So based on this information, they went and pressure checked both cylinder heads heated up. Normally you just pressure check them at room temperature. And they did that earlier, but it didn't show the problem. In fact, no one had caught the problem before because they had just pressure checked them at room temperature and they didn't leak at room temperature. Once the heads were heated up, they were able to detect a leak inside the intake runner on cylinder number two, which is why that cylinder was actually so clean on the piston because it had water washing in there helping to steam clean that piston the whole time. And that's why the engine overheated in the first place because it was allowing the engine to consume all of the water which ran the engine out of coolant which is why it overheated in the first place. And if we hadn't done these samples, we would not have detected that problem. We would have gone back to the racetrack and had the same problem again. By the way, this is another perfect example of how break-in wear metals drop initially from that first oil change, even the second oil change, they're dropping right down because the engine's breaking right in because that's what engines do. They break in, which is where the term came from. Okay, so, Back to the dyno session so you can see the results. Fortunately, the used oil analysis showed us where the problem was. We were able to find the problem, fix the problem. Now it's back on the dyno and we're gonna show you how much power it makes now with all the problems fixed. So we've rebaselined the engine with the old carb, the standard NASCAR fuel, and the thing's making about 765 horsepower. So it's up about 15 horsepower from where it was previously. The other thing is with the new oil pump, actually it's the old oil pump, but the guys at line to line coated all the gear sections and all this. So now we've gone from about six inches of vacuum to 14 inches of vacuum. So we picked up some vacuum, the baseline's there. So now what we're gonna do is we put on my buddy Trevor Wiggins, get him performance. We got his twin blade carburetors. We've gone from a regular four barrel carburetor to a twin blade carburetor. So really we've gone from about 830 CFM to 1000 CFM. So we're gonna run that same carburetor, this 1000 CFM carburetor with the Q16 fuel. So last time we peaked out about 777 horsepower with the four barrel, with the Q16. So let's put this twin blade on there, put in some Q16 and find out what she's got. All right, so this is how they get qualifying, right? Yep, qualifying run. Cold oil, or hot, cold hot water, yeah. hot oil, couple yep. degrees of timing, right? Yep, here we go. Yeah. 
power wise, yeah. 758 to right same point, 91. 791. Yeah. Right. That's wow. big. Now here's the torque. This is what your dad's going to feel right oh, there. Oh, yeah, he'll like that. All right, so 562, and then originally it was 45. 45. 17 foot pounds. Yes. Yeah, that'll wake him up. Yeah, that'll wake him up. Yeah. So here's the final tally of the saga with dad's old Ford C3 engine. 791 horsepower is what we're going to give him to go back to the racetrack with. That's a hundred more than he had way back in the day 20 years ago. It's over 300 more than he probably had the last time he ran it. And most importantly, we found the problem of why it overheated in the first place. The used oil analysis saved the day from that happening again. And now with all the changes, right? But remember, same block, same heads, same manifold, same crank, same rods, uh, same oil pump as before, but we, the guys from line to line, coated the pump. So we went from six inches of vacuum. Now we're at 14 inches of vacuum. Thanks to the guys that are driven, we go from old 2050 oil now to 5W20 oil. We're going from the old school fuel to the new VP Q16, more powerful oxygenated fuel. Man, I can't thank Billy Godbold, all the guys at Comp Cams, Edelbrock, John Callies at Morrell, enough all new valve train. Dennis and the guys here at ProMotor did a great job of, you know, porting and polishing the manifold and the heads and getting them tuned up. But man, the guys at CP, New Pistons, Keith, all mother buddies at Total Seal, right? We went from that old 043 top ring, you know, duck to Molly, 1.5 second ring, two, three millimeter oil ring to a 0 0.7, 0 0.7, two millimeter gas ported ring set. We picked this engine up over a hundred horsepower with all those internal changes. We're making 791 horsepower. So he's got some ponies to put under the hood to go back to the racetrack. So let's get this thing and put it in the car.